Hooray! It opened! Hmm. Good job. Looks like there's a lot in there. What is all the, that stuff? Hold on. I'll take everything out, just be patient. Let's see. First off, a map. It says floor B. The one we found in the infirmary said floor A. So that means floor A must be the top floor, huh? I mean, we took an elevator down to get here. Yeah, seems like it. Keep going. There's more in there. This looks like the moon card. The moon keys. They've got moons on them. That means these must be the moon keys the announcer was talking about. These, there's two of them. Just like with the sun key. You take one, Ten Muji. Huh? Why? You're a solo. Col Clover and I only need one. Ah, right. Thanks. Okay, got a couple more things. What's this? A blue card. Looks like a memory card. I feel like I've seen something like that before. But where? I wonder what's on the on it. Well, unless we can find something to stick it into, we won't be a be finding out any time soon. Huh. Well, we can figure that out later. For now, we'll just take it with us. Well, we've got left. All we've got left is the key. Is that the key to the exit? What else would it be? We should be able to get that door open now. Come on, there's no time to waste. Let's move. Not yet. Okay, so they don't have the card there. We've still got to work out this other code. So green and purple. Green and purple. One. Green, purple, so one, one. Light blue, green, purple. One, one, seven. Because green and purple, and then one is seven. That's what those squares on the side of the machine are. Huh? Did... Did I solve it? Looks like it. I mean, the colour changed and everything. Moon, sun, sun. Huh? This one's different. You think it'll open the safe too? Well, no harm in remembering it. That was it, wasn't it? Yep. Phew. Looks like that did the... Did it? I've got the secret file. That's the two passwords I just got. I think it's about time we go through these again. Wound one. Ah, okay. <laughs> so this is wound one. Fourth intercoastal left between the 4th and 5th ribs on the upper left chests. What? Stab wound. A wound caused by a knife or other sharp object. Wound margin. Clear con continuous. The wound margins are cons consistent with the stab wound. 
wound angles one sharp one blunt this is consistent with a knife wound most knives have one sharp cutting edge and one flat edge which would produce this wound profile I'm not sure exactly what this is a wound describing I think it might be when maybe one of the times Luna and I don't know so this is second wound wound cavity the depth of the wound frequently this will match the length of the blade used wound length the length long way long ways of the wound left in the epidermis usually this corresponds to the height of the blade wound width blunt angle the width of the blunt angle of the wound usually this corresponds roughly to the width of the knife blade allowing for elasticity of the skin okay every time I hear the word epidermis it reminds me to a Simpsons episode where Bart breaks his leg and the Simpsons family get a pull At the time Bart breaks his leg, Nelson yells up to him in his treehouse, your epidermis is showing, and goes, it's true, because epidermis is your hair, but it's your skin. <laughs> I know the Simpsons always try to be as factual as they can, but they did get that one wrong. Coroner. Not to be confused with a coroner, a coroner, a coroner is a government official who assists law enforcement by investigating the causes of death and dealing with the paperwork and logistics surrounding corpses. It can also be used colloquially to refer to someone who performs these duties, whether or not they are actually employed by the government. Autopsy. An autopsy is a post-mortem surgery that examines a body in detail to determine the cause of death and evaluate any disease or injuries that might be present in... It is also super gross. <laughs> so this was out of one of the gold files in one of these rooms. Luminol mixture. Luminol is an organic compound with the chemical formula C8H7N3O2 when mixed with a uh, hydroxide salt and hydrogen peroxide it will glow blue when it comes in contact with blood and certain other substances this property has made it a useful tool in criminal investigations where it can reveal blood stains that have been cleaned up. Keep this in mind the next time you're contemplating how to deal with the neighbours listening to death metal at 3 in the morning. <laughs> okay. Bracelet 2. At first glance, Kay's bracelet seems different from the others because it's built into his suit. Specifically, it appears to be attached to his suit. Although the design is slightly different, it is not a part of his suit. The bracelet is attached directly to his wrist, with the face looking out through a hole in his armour, just like the other bracelets. It will only come off when he escapes, or when his heart stops beating. Generalized amnesia, a memory condition where the sufferer retrain, retains knowledge such a, such a language, social common sense, and so on, but memories of their own past and personality disappear. Its cause is usually psychological, 
but in rare cases it can be caused by serious head trauma. Kay suggested that an extremely painful breakup might have been the cause of his condition, but generalized amnesia usually requires a much more powerful trigger than breaking up with someone. In fact, a painful breakup often has the opposite effect. You want desperately to forget, but find that to be impossible, which leads to all sorts of other mental disorders, or so the person sitting behind me says. Uh, what? <laughs> or so the person sitting behind me says? Um... I think I've still got a couple more of those sheet pages to read. There's one. I've still got two. I've still got a few more to discover. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Looks like I've still got five more rooms to go through. And I've got three more that I currently have that I haven't read yet. We'll exit the room first. Okay, no problem, Pickles. Thanks for hanging out and chatting. Always great to have you here. The lock for the door, it says lock. Let's go. Okay, right. Let's do this. Three, two, one. It's a bit annoying that he counts three to one, three, two, one, every time he goes to open the door. Is this another warehouse? Looks just like the one on the last floor. There's even a big old door in the same spot where the number nine door is in the other warehouse. True, but this, but it's rusted over. I don't think it's opening anytime soon. No lever to open it anyway, I can see. Well, shoot. We couldn't possibly open that with our bare hands. Duh. How much do you think that thing weighs? You'd have about as much luck trying to lift a pickup truck, even if it was unlocked. Hmm. <laughs> I want to know what those are. Those white doors? The next group of chromatic doors. And I haven't gone through a single white door yet. Hmm. Yeah, seems like it. I mean, look at this. It's one of those things that says lock. Yeah, just like the ones next to the other chromatic doors. So you were saying all the chromatic doors for the next round are white? Yeah. They were different colors before, but... Guess things have changed for this round. Before we could discuss the doors any further, a familiar robot robotic voice cackled over the speakers. An Ambidex gate has been opened. Dio! 45 minutes remain until Ambidex gate... One of the other teams opened the gate early. Dio. What in the hell did they do that for? We haven't even started back yet. Ah, never mind why. We just need to get back up. I'm worried about Quark. I think that's... No, that's not going to be the last time I hear that. I'll hear it there and here. Need to hook up with Alice and Kay. The sooner the better. Right, got it. Let's go.
We're back! We return to the Floor A warehouse to find only two people waiting for us. Kay who'd gone through the red door. And Dio who'd gone through the green door. Where's Quark? We took him to the infirmary. At the moment, Alice, Fi, and Luna are looking after him. Is he alright? I don't know if I would describe him as alright, but apparently his condition has not worsened, if that's what you mean. He is still resting. However, we... Good. I'm going to the infirmary. Ah, uh, Tenmyoji, please, wait! Tenmyoji ignored Kay and took off at a run, though, through the yellow door. Oh dear. He's gone. There was something I needed to tell him. Well, it's not like it matters. The girls will just tell him when he gets there. He ought to calm down once he's seen the kid. Clover and I looked at one another, eyebrows raised. Um... What are they going to tell him? Well, you see... What? You found virus medicine in the laboratory? Yes. Oh. Unfortunately, we found only a single vial. Yes. Then we can cure Quark's Radical 6. So it would seem. Well, I guess we should head over to the infirmary and see how he's doing. Come on, let's go. Right behind you. He should be fine now. It might take some time for him to recover fully, but the worst is over. Luna's voice was quiet as she stepped back from Quark. She held an injection gun with an empty vial. Delicately, 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 she placed it back in the cabinet. That's a hard word. <laughs> Quark had been laid out on a crude cot and was still sound asleep. His breathing was even and his expression was peaceful. He looked like any other child sleeping soundly after a long day of doing whatever it is children do to amuse themselves. Any trace of the insanity he'd shown earlier was nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found. Yes. We analyzed the vial and confirmed that it was definitely Excelivir. Now that I've administered it... The Excelivir should eradicate the virus completely given enough time, right? Yes, that should be the case. <sighs> Thank goodness. Yeah, what a relief. Things are looking pretty sketchy there for a while, that's for sure. I felt some of the tension disappear from my so shoulders and I let out a breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. We weren't out of the woods yet, but at least Quark was safe. <sighs> Tenmyuji let out a long, shaky sigh and lowered himself onto one of the empty beds. He rubbed his eye hands warily across his face, and I thought I saw the glint of, a t of tears. Alice, you and Kay, I... I don't know what to say other than... Thanks. You saved his life. I don't know the words to tell you how much that means to me. Oh, please. It was nothing. Really. We just happened to be the ones who went through the red door. Where is Kay? He's not in here. He's still in the warehouse. Dio and Kay stayed behind. They went there to wait for you guys while we came back here. We figured someone should explain what was going on so you wouldn't come back to an empty warehouse. So Dio and Kay were the ones who opened the AB gates. Not both of them. There was only one door open. Hmm. Well, we should get back and tell them how Quark's doing. Only one guess. I already know 100% who. Kay will want to know at least. Yeah, you're right. 
I nodded and headed back toward the other side of the room. I was nearly there when Tenmyuji suddenly spoke. <laughs> of course it was Quark. <laughs> That's right. He may have been sleeping, but of course it was him. Huh? You know that memory card we found? Yeah. This thing. Yeah. I think I know how we can take a look at what's on it. What? You don't remember? There was a memory card just like it that we used to solve the puzzles in here. Yeah. He's right. There's a slot next to the screen. Should work for this one, too. Oh, yeah. There it is. There it is. Right. Yeah. Well, let's give it a shot. Yeah. I want to see what's on it. Okay, just give me a minute here. I slid the card into the slot next to the screen. No sooner had I done so than an image of a waveform popped up on the screen. Is there an audio file on here? Why don't we turn up the volume a bit? Luna tapped a few things on the screen and a bar began to move across the screen. Before long, a voice drifted out of the speakers. This is Control. How's it going over there? Bet you missed the sound of my voice, huh? Well, I gotta be honest. It's getting pretty lonely over here, too. Feeling kind of like howling at the moon, lone wolf style. Speaking of which, I'm looking at it right now. The old girl is beautiful. Never seen a moon this full. And that color. Tonight's that eclipse, remember? What a way to end 2028, huh? The moon's this amazing red. We were kidnapped on Christmas so Day. It'd be kind of ominous. So this is... Six days late? Wish you guys could see it too, but... Uh, sorry, forgot. You're supposed to be on Mars, aren't you? Uh, what? So, uh, how are Phobos and Deimos looking right now? Supposed to be on Mars? What? Sure hope I'll get to look up at them someday, too. Anyway, over. Hey, something wrong? Talk to me, guys. What? You gonna play hard to get because we haven't talked in so long? Enough jokes, alright? Knock it off. Where are you guys? Is there something wrong with the radio? You're saying everything's green? Well then, what the hell's going on here? Why aren't they responding? No, the video feed's online. Look, you can see all nine of them. Three at each table. Uh... What? Someone hacked our feed? What do you mean, this isn't live? An old clip on repeat? Who would do that? What in the hell is happening here? This is control. I repeat, this is control. Please come in. I'm asking you to respond. This is... Oh, thank God. You really had me worried there. What happened? Six of us are... dead. Oh. What? What? Counting myself, there are only three left. How? Why are... They were killed. What? I... I guess you could say I killed them. What? Uh... No. No, that's not quite right. Not just them. Not just these six. Uh... All of them. All six billion. Uh... Soon, I will have killed six billion people. Are you there? Respond! Uh, this is control. I repeat, this is control. We have an emergency situation. We have an unconfirmed report of six deceased test subjects. Deploy rescue and escort teams to the test site immediately. Shit. What the hell happened in there? Uh. Okay. Is, is that it? Yes. What on earth was that? 
Any ideas? I got only frowns and shaken heads in re response. Only one person showed a reaction other than stunned confusion. Tenmyuji. Long after the audio ended, he stared at the screen deep in thought. Do you know something, Tenmyoji? Yeah, I think I know what that was. It's probably a transmission from the Mars mission test site. Mars? I'm sorry, what? You mean some kind of space travel? What kind of test site was it? Hmm. Did you know that the government is developing spaceships with particle annihilation engines? These ships would be able to get humans to Mars a lot faster than old chemical rockets. But they don't want to just send a manned Mars mission off half-cocked. That was the idea behind this test. They built a whole complex in this old Air Force base in Nevada. The idea was that it would be a simulation of a manned mission to Mars with a crew of nine men and women. They'd monitor the whole thing and use that data to plan the real mission. So what we just listened to was a transmission from that project. Yeah. Why is something like that here? Don't know why. We found it in the safe. No explanation. Dollars to donuts, it's got something to do with Zero's plan. You mean we were meant to hear what was on that card? Yep. Yeah. It's all very interesting, but how exactly do you know about all this? Oh, about the simulated Mars mission? Yes. I was involved with the project. Involved? Now, the intent was to create as accurate a simulation as possible. That meant we'd need to simulate the radio silence we'd experience during conjunction. What's a conjunction? It means two things in space are close to each other. In this case, we're talking about a superior conjunction, where Mars and Earth are on the exact opposite sides of the Sun. So unless we've got some sort of relay, there'll be a period of time where we won't be able to communicate with each other. What we heard on that card was when the simulated conjunction was scheduled to end. That's when they died. Now we don't know that. They could have died long before that conversation. All we know is that's when it was discovered. So six of the test subjects died, right? Yeah. Well, do you remember what she said? There was something about how she didn't just kill six people. She said six billion. What the heck did she mean by that? Just what the hell happened there? Tenryuji frowned and looked down at the floor. We were all silent as he paced slowly back and forth across the room. At least he, st at last he stopped, raised his head, and spoke. The truth is that there's a chance a virus escaped from the test site. A virus? Wait, you don't mean? Yeah, radical, radical six. six. But how was it there in the first place? What? How can that be? I'm just telling you what I know, okay? Nobody's sure how Radical Six got in there in the first place, but... One of the subjects might have been infected when they entered. Or, the virus itself might have been an intentional part of the simulation. What? The virus itself might have been an intentional part of the simulation? Uh... The test site deaths became the index case for a pandemic. Anyway... Prevailing wisdom says it got out somehow, and once it was out, it spread pretty quick. All across the planet. And it killed six billion people? It still sounds pretty close to the current virus we've been living through for the past couple of years. But that one didn't kill six billion. No, not directly. Best numbers put only a third or so of those deaths as directly caused by Radical Six. The other four billion died from the collapse caused by the deaths of that first third. The whole world just... fell apart. So Tenmyuji knew about the virus beforehand? That's what I'm gathering. Because he's saying only a third of the, the deaths were accounted were directly linked to the virus? How would he know that if he didn't know anything about it before? 
Wow, um, damn. I have a lot of questions. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start knowing where to start. Well, no. Take that back. Explain that date. 